think I'm going to try intermittent fasting until he's from Timber. What? I'm going to try intermittent fasting until he's from Man Titties. You do realise you can't eat anything for 24 hours? Yeah. Ben, are you okay? What? It's fast and stuff. Not for me. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. As always, if you enjoyed that intro, or more specifically you enjoyed Lucy looking like an absolute twit, then please give it a massive like. I think that thumbs up button. And whilst you're here, please subscribe to my channel. Anyway, I'm going to be talking today about how I've been fasting for three years, obviously. Not literally fasting for three years, but fasting for three years. And the way that I started fasting, I pretty much slid into it because I was not eating until later on in the day anyway due to my kind of training habits and the way that I would set up my day to, for work and just getting shit done. So for me, it was quite an easy transition from just kind of moving my hours about of when I was eating in specific times and windows. So at first, I wasn't necessarily sticking to like a fasting window or a fasting type specifically. And this is something that I'm going to talk about more later on in the video and generally where most people up. And for most people who are considering it, i.e. fasting, not actually doing it. If you know what I mean. Then I'm going to be going balls deep into the benefits, the drawbacks, some of the things that you should be looking out for, and how it can do your doggy style if you're not careful. Less sex and innuendos, innuendos in this video. It's kind of like them. But the first thing and the most exciting thing that we are going to be doing with fasted is training. One of the benefits of being fasted is productivity. So what you want to do is try and keep busy. So I generally come to the gym in the morning and train fasted. One of the things that I want to get perfectly clear though is that there's no real fat loss benefits to Fasted training because some people think it's the holy grail. Now, fasted training does lead to better fat oxidation, however, it doesn't lead to more fat loss. If you fast during your work and then go home and have a mouthful, what's going to happen? You're going to put on weight. My biggest question if you are considering training fasted is going to be two. One, what are your energy levels like? So if your energy levels are absolutely sucking and training fasted, it's probably better to have something to eat. However, if you're training, doing deadlifts, and then you feel like you're about to spew up everywhere, it's probably best not to have your morning oats or protein shake before you come to the gym. And just try training without something to eat. My day during this fast period will be to get some work done over a nice coffee. I like my coffee, it's just like I like my men, long and black. Now this is a part of fast that some people get their backs up about, and that is about breaking the fast. Now if you believe that breaking your fast over a coffee is a be all and end all, then fasting probably isn't for you. And it's the part where we get into breaking your fast and what you should break the fast with. And if we look at it a little bit closer, breaking a fast actually translates to break fast. I eat breakfast, I know, weird. Who would have thought? Now we often get told that breakfast is the most important meal of the day and it was actually a company called Kellogg's that really pushed this slogan down our throat. And I wonder why a multi-million pound company that sells cereal for a living would metaphorically ram this down your throat. Now the method that I stick to is the 16-8 method and the 16-8 method basically means that you fast for 16 hours and you eat for an eight hour window. And at first glance this can seem quite difficult, but if we break it down into sleep for eight hours, if you take two hours out of your day to go to the gym and hopefully shower, if you stop eating at eight and then don't eat until 12 the next day, you have stuck to your 16 and eight fasting window. However, I like to change this slightly and I'll start my eating window at one o'clock and I'll finish eating at 9 p.m. I would generally have like four to five meals per day, which is fairly substantial. I'll get those all in that kind of eight hour eating window. So I generally eat sort of every eight hours. Now there are different types of fasting methods that you may want to try and that you can stick to. One of them, which is quite renowned, is called Eat, Stop, Eat, which is generally where you'll eat, stop, and then eat. And what you'll do is a 24 hour fast once per week, which to me sounds like hell, but you do you. There's also another one called Fire 2, which you will eat pretty much normal for five days and then restrict your calories down to 400 to 500 calories for two days per week. Again, not ideal. Then there is the warrior diet and I like to rename this one to the purple headed warrior diet as you'd have to be one to stick to this sort of diet in my humble opinion. Basically what you do in this diet is pretty much eat one massive meal per day which equates to you having seven meals per week only. Not only do I think this really unsustainable but I think it promotes bad eating habits 
such as binge eating and bad relationships with food. Whichever one that you decide to do, just remember that you can amend it and change it to fit your lifestyle and the way that fits for you and then scale it over time. Oh, so good. The biggest obstacle for most people generally is curbing hunger, i.e. appetite. And this is the earliest thing that you'll have to get over when you first start fasting. And the best thing to remember is that hunger only generally lasts about 20 minutes. If you think back to the last time that you were hungry and then got caught up doing something, hunger probably passed within a 20 to 30 minute window. I mean, no one ever died from being hungry for an hour or two. And generally that hunger that you got caught up in, which made you wanna eat a bagel the size of a small child, probably subsided. The best thing to do during this window is probably to grab a coffee, a Diet Coke, a pint of water, and then just crack on with some tasks or some housework that you've got to do at the time. But, on that note, it's time to eat. But, unfortunately for you, I've already had my first meal, which was nine egg whites and two whole eggs, because I like to start off with a nice high protein content from a first meal, but I was just too hungry to wait. So, we're gonna dive into our next meal, it is now 4.30. I'm gonna have, I'm actually gonna have, having some chicken as usual. I always buy cooked chicken because I can't be off cooking chicken. I'll take two pound of the pack. Any little hacks in life are worth it. I'm also gonna have some noodles and some peas just because the shit. Now one of the things that fasting actually allows for is obviously for you to or me to eat more food later on. I like to put this into an analogy of that no one is ever going balls deep into the Ben and Jerry's ice cream at 7 a.m. in the morning. It's always 10, 11 o'clock at night that people are spilling over the calorie intake. So if you have more to play with later on in the day, then there's less likelihood of you dipping into the biscuit barrel, going balls deep into the ice cream and spilling over your calories later on in the day. Unless you're an absolute dairy fiend and you do go 7 a.m. in the morning then there's nothing I can do for you. There's another analogy that I like to use is to do with pocket money. So if you save your pocket money for later in the week, you can have more to enjoy like when it comes to such things as weekend, when all good shit tends to happen. But if you spend it all earlier on the week, then you're pretty much fucked later on. However, I don't really know what it feels like because I was bought, brought up in a tent on the side of the motorway and my dad didn't have any money. So the only way I make money now is by you hitting the like button and subscribe. So please do that. Now there are a couple of benefits with intermittent fasting such as appetite control, which I've found really helped over the last couple of years. Weight loss. There is some claims that it can help to reverse Type 2 diabetes, I believe. Don't quote me on that one. And also something called autophagy, 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 I believe, which is basically the body's way of cleaning out damaged cells and replacing them with newer, healthier ones. I believe is one of the things that helps it inhibit cells in cancer. Don't quote me on that one, but I believe it is. However, all this can also be achieved via a caloric deficit. And definitely more salt. Now, obviously, all the calorie deficit basically is. When we're consuming less calories or the calories that keep us under a maintenance weight in order to drop weight. So there's two ways that we can do this. One, increase our output. Two, decrease the amount of calories that we are consuming. Now this is the absolutely key to fasting, especially if you want to do fasting for weight loss and fat loss. Because if you don't, it's kind of like trying to conceive a child whilst wearing a Jurex. So it ain't gonna happen. Oh, I hate the sound of people drinking. So I just want to give you some of the drawbacks and possibilities that may come with fasting that I want you to be aware of before you decide to dive into any sort of fasting diet. One of the big ones being binge eating. So like I said before, I think that a fasting diet for some people, especially they've got tendencies to binge, to overeat, to be over restrictive or to punish themselves through exercise to try and get to a certain shape. Fasting may not be for you, or, on the same note, like it was for me, fasting actually helped it. So I can't recommend and say this is gonna help you or this is gonna hinder you, but it's something just to be mindful of if you found yourself a bit of a binge eater in the past. Like I briefly touched on before, hunger's gonna be a big one. Trying to get something to fill the gap, such as a bit of Coke. Not talking about the good stuff. Also remember, it's not gonna be for everyone, so if you try it, I'd recommend and say, give it a good two to four weeks to see if it can fit your lifestyle and your routine. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. And don't get your hopes up about it because there's plenty of diets that may be more fitting for your lifestyle. Now, I also want to touch on the topic of muscle building. It's often referred to as not really being optimal for the muscle building because you want to try and stay anabolic as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm not talking about the juice, the gear, or performance enhancers. I'm talking about what keeps us in a catabolic or anabolic place. But for me, I've been able to build I'd say a solid amount of muscle tissue over the last kind of three years since I've been fasting and it hasn't really hindered the process, I don't think personally. Also when it comes to training, I've, I've hit some of my probably personal best lift 
over the bench press, a squat and a deadlift since I've been fasting. Is it the reason for it? Who knows? But I've still been able to hit personal best whilst I've been fasted training during my morning training sessions. Now the basics of fasting is basically that. It's changing the times that you eat. Nothing else happens. This isn't the wisdom world of Harry Potter. There isn't any magic to it, despite what that V shred guy might tell you. Because there's plenty of people, let me tell you, who'll be trying to sell you programs to do with intermittent fasting. And all the information that you need is either in this video or on a place that is free to everybody called Google. I've also had a couple of questions from the gram. And when I say a couple of questions from the gram, I mean my mum's DM me a few questions she wants to know about fasting. So I'm gonna cover a couple of those now. Okay, this is a really weird one. What do you do with your egg yolks put in the bin, mate? If you want them to send them to you, I'll send you 50 bags of egg yolks every single week. It's not a problem, okay? Do you ever have breaks from intermittent fasting when you feel like it? To be honest, because it's just become an everyday part of my life and like intermittent fasting is built into my, I suppose, like circadian rhythm, so to speak. When I get up, I'm just not hungry anymore. My appetite has been suppressed. I've actually, one of the good things that from fasting that has happened is that I've been able to have better appetite control, so I don't feel hungry to one, so generally just stick to it year round. I stop eating at 5 p.m. and start eating at 6 a.m. Is this class as intermittent fasting? As I said, you can control the fasting windows. You don't have to stick to like a 16-8 method. You could do a 15-9 method or whatever you want to way around you want to do it as long as you find that between your schedule, or if you want to stick to something which is more simple first and scale it, then so be it. How do you get enough protein in whilst fasting? Well, for me, as I said, nothing changes with my diet. My diet's exactly the same as it was for fasting. However, I'm just moving the meals around into smaller eating window. Nothing changes with my calorie intake, my protein intake, my carb source, my fat sources. It stays all the same. This is what people need to get through, that it's just changing your eating window, so nothing changes calorically. And you will still need to be in a calorie deficit if you want to lose weight. Okay, so there's actually been a question on binging. How do you keep from binging when an intermittent fasting period is up? So again, this is something that you've got to be wary of. If you've been a binge eater before and in the past, I'd probably say it's not for you. However, one of the things that's good to do is immediately after finishing a meal, generally when your appetite is gonna be higher and when those hunger hormones will be increased, so you'll still feel hungry sometimes after a meal. What I'd say is either have a pint of water before or after a meal and wait 15 minutes once you fill your meal. Because guaranteed it's usually when you're in a restaurant. You're going balls deep into your half chicken with lemon spice and your peri-peri chips and you're thinking, that chocolate cheesecake's a good idea. But 15 minutes later, you think, nah, I don't need that cake. I'm all the man I need. So just give yourself a 15 minute window once you've finished and I guarantee that hunger I got somewhat before will subside at some point. Hopefully it's just before you ball deep in cheesecake or someone else. But that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a massive like and a thumbs up. And if it's your first time visiting my channel, then please make sure that you subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.